the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can a good Protestant go to heaven? What about a good Jew, a good Muslim, or a good pagan? Can they go to heaven? On this Sunday after Easter, uh, commonly called Divine Mercy Sunday, we are reminded of the excessive mercy of Christ's heart, which desires the salvation of all men. Is it my will that a sinner should die, saith the Lord, and not rather that he be converted and live? From the prophet Ezekiel. However, there is no guarantee of salvation even for Catholics. The church teaches that good Catholics have a reasonable hope of salvation, but there is no guarantee. And for those who are not members of the Catholic Church, no reassurance is given at all. In fact, the Fourth Lateran Council in the year 1215 recognized and declared that outside of the Catholic Church there is no salvation. Extra quam nullus omni no salvator. This teaching was reiterated at the Council of Florence in 1431 and by Popes Innocent III, Boniface VIII, Clement VI, Benedict XIV, Leo XIII, Pius IX, and Pius XII, to name a few. This teaching is the constant reiterated uh, teaching of the church. It is a matter of faith. It is not an opinion. And this is the teaching of the church, no matter who says anything to the contrary. Pope Leo XII in Ubi Primum says thus, is the year 1824. It is impossible for the most true God, who is truth itself, to approve all sects who profess false teachings, which are often inconsistent with one another and contradictory and to confer eternal rewards on their members. By divine faith, we hold one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and that no other name under heaven is given to men except the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in which we must be saved. This is why we profess that there is no salvation outside the church. So what does it mean to be inside the church? What is necessary for for one to be a member of the church? There are three conditions. A person must be baptized. A person must accept all the teachings of the Catholic Church on faith and morals. And a person must accept the authority of the magisterium and of the Pope. These are based on the biblical commands of Christ himself who made eternal salvation dependent upon the teaching of his apostles and the reception of baptism. Mark 16:15, Go ye into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. Christ gave other teachings as well. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Whatever you bind on earth will will be bound in heaven. Elsewhere, he says, he who hears you, hears me. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So, can a good Protestant or a good anybody who is outside the Catholic Church be saved? Before we answer that question, let's first ask another question. What does it mean to be a good Catholic? And why does the church say that a good Catholic has a reasonable hope of salvation? First of all, a good Catholic will accept that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, founded a church for our salvation, and that this church has a visible hierarchy which was, has been passed down from Christ through the apostles. A good Catholic knows that Christ instituted seven sacraments for our salvation, and for this reason he will be baptized and confirmed. A good Catholic will receive the sacraments of Holy Communion and Confession frequently. He will attend Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation and obey all the precepts of the church. A good Catholic submits to the teaching authority of the magisterium and of the Pope. 
He accepts the truths of the faith that have always and everywhere been taught by the church throughout the ages, including the truth that outside the church there is no salvation. A good Catholic strives to live a virtuous life according to the gospel. He obeys the Ten Commandments, seeks to fulfill the Beatitudes, and forgives his enemies. A good Catholic avoids sin and the near occasion of sin. He makes use of sacramentals, prays the rosary, prays to the saints and angels in heaven, and prays for the souls in purgatory. On his deathbed, a good Catholic will receive the last rites. He will make a good confession, arrange to have masses offered for the repose of his soul, and earnestly ask for prayers after his death. Such a Catholic leaves behind an excellent example of faith and fidelity to the church founded by God. One who has lived such a life can be reasonably assured of his salvation. And another way of saying that, it would be unreasonable for a Catholic who is living such a life to fear that he would go to hell. Now, what about our good Protestant? A good Protestant will be baptized, usually, but not confirmed. He will never receive Holy Communion, and he will never make a good confession. He will not attend Mass on Sundays and Holy Days, and he will not follow the precepts of the church. A good Protestant will reject the magisterium of the church, reject many of her doctrines, and will never accept the authority of the Pope. A good Protestant will not pray to the Blessed Virgin. He will not make use of any sacramentals. He will not pray to the angels or saints in heaven, and he will not pray for the souls in purgatory. On his deathbed, if a priest somehow came to a minister to a Protestant, a good Protestant would throw out the papist. He will not have any masses said for his soul. He will not ask anyone to pray for him after his death, and he will die never having been to confession even once. Does this death fill us with confidence? Can a good Protestant, such as the one we have just described, make it to heaven? According to the teaching of the church, yes, it is still possible. For the church teaches uh, that unlike with a good Catholic, it is not reasonable to hope for the salvation of Protestants because it's not reasonable to hope for the salvation of one who rejects Christ, the church he founded, and all the sacraments for our salvation. Nevertheless, it is not impossible. The church also teaches, uh, recognizes rather, that many Protestants may be in a state of what is called good faith. Good faith applies to those who, through no fault of their own, have been taught to reject the truths of the faith and cling to error as though they were clinging to truth. Typically included in this, this idea of good faith is a condition called invincible ignorance, which is when a person has never truly had the opportunity to learn the teachings of the true church, and also votum ecclesiae, which is a desire to belong to the one true church founded by Christ, even though a person is mistaken about what that is. Pius IX says in Singulare Quidem, the Catholic Church firmly believes and confesses that there is no salvation outside the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. However, it is equally certain that those who are invincibly ignorant of the true religion are not guilty for this reason in the eyes of the Lord. Therefore, they are not to be counted as among the enemies of Christ and can be saved by the grace of God. But let us be clear. If a Protestant is saved, it is despite his Protestantism and not because of it. What will condemn a Protestant are his specifically Protestant ideas. Rejection of the Pope, Rejection of the sacraments, rejection of prayers to the saints, rejection of the doctrine of purgatory, etc. All of these are heresies, which is a post-baptismal denial of faith, and that is a grave sin. 
But what will save a Protestant are those beliefs which are generally Catholic. Belief in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the necessity of baptism, belief in the Trinity, belief in the forgiveness of sins, observation of the Ten Commandments. These are good things. Uh, Protestants are in a hard position wanting to be saved, wanting to be closer to God, praying and doing good works for their salvation, but then rejecting those very helps which God instituted to bring them salvation. It would be very cruel for any Catholic to leave a Protestant in good faith in that position without telling them. There is more. To tell a Protestant, just be a good Protestant and you can make it to heaven, is like telling someone, keep believing in error as though it were truth. Keep drinking battery acid for your health. Keep running away from Christ in order to get closer to him. That is not an act of charity or mercy. If a Protestant is damned, it is because he has acted like a Protestant. If he is saved... It is because he has acted like a Catholic. So let's return to this Protestant in good faith to see what will save him. A Protestant in good faith will be baptized. He will be in the habit of prayer. He will read the Bible and he will pray the Our Father. A Protestant in good faith will profess belief in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He will recognize the need to repent of his sins, and he will admit the need of salvation. He will accept the fundamental truths of the Apostles' Creed. A Protestant in good faith will believe that we must avoid sin and grow in virtue. He will obey the Ten Commandments and strive to fulfill the Beatitudes. He will forgive his enemies. A Protestant in good faith will accept his death with resignation as coming from the hand of God. He will prepare himself to be judged by Christ, and he will know that the unrighteous cannot inherit the kingdom of God. All of these are good things, and they indicate more or less good faith, a readiness to conform one's life to God's will insofar as one understands it. And we can presume the votum ecclesiae, that desire to belong to the church of Christ, and invincible ignorance, no way of knowing uh, otherwise. So can such Protestants in good faith be saved? Yes, but there are still two more things. Two more things a Protestant must do before they die. And that is to accept the magisterium of the church and to uh, reject all errors to the contrary. Because three things are necessary. Three things are necessary for membership. Baptism, acceptance of all dogmas, and acceptance of the authority of the ecclesiastical structure. Uh, So baptized Protestants in good faith, uh, they're still not all of the way there. Uh, But the church recognizes that that acceptance of the church, that acceptance of the magisterium, can happen any time before death. One second or even one millisecond. Uh, So many times we have heard so many stories of souls coming back from the dead or from the near dead, uh, bringing back stories of having met Christ, seen the judgment, seen souls fall into hell, being given a second chance. So many things can happen internally at the moment of death. And this is what the church recognizes, that grace is still possible. Even for somebody who from all exterior appearances has rejected the church and died in error and in sin, Who knows what is possible at that very moment of death? And the church even has a um, a, a term. It's the the church visible and the church invisible. The visible church are those who accept externally the teachings of the church, participate in the sacraments, and obey lawful governance of the hierarchy. The church invisible are all those who with a sincere heart are seeking the true religion and are ready to embrace the truth when they find it. So this is what we can pray for, uh, for all those souls who are perishing or who seem to be perishing outside the church. Pray for that internal conversion of heart before the moment of death. And this goes for anybody, not just Protestants, anybody in good faith. Uh, The sad thing is, though, the further away one is from the Catholic Church, the further away one is from truth. And the further away one is from salvation. 
If any, if any non-Catholic person is saved, it is not because of their religion, it is despite their religion. Despite Judaism, despite Islam, despite Protestantism, souls can still be saved by the prayers of the church. What they must do is receive the graces of uh, baptism of desire before death, if they are not already baptized, rejection of any and all errors contrary to the church, so rejecting Protestantism, the errors of, of the, the sects that I have mentioned, accepting all the truths of the Catholic Church, including the authority of the Pope, and finally, making an act of perfect contrition, sorrow and repentance of all mortal sins on account of God's goodness alone. In so doing, uh, any person of good faith will rid their soul of all mortal sin and fill it with sanctifying grace. And in fact, this is the one condition necessary to enter heaven. The church teaches definitively, souls who die in a state of sanctifying grace will enter heaven eventually, even if it means passing through purgatory for a time. Those who die not in a state of sanctifying grace cannot enter heaven. There's no way to gain sanctifying grace after death and they are excluded from heaven. There's only one other place they can go. What enables a person to accept sanctifying grace is accepting God. And God has spoken to the Catholic Church through his son, through the Holy Ghost, through the apostles, through the magisterium. This is why a rejection of any part of the Catholic Church, of any part of the dogmas of the church, is a rejection of God. The Catholic Church is the religion established by God. Just like one cannot accept God, I will accept part of you, but not all of you. God will accept part of your truths, but not all of your truths. That's not possible. And so it is. Souls must accept the truths of the Catholic Church because God has taught through the Catholic Church. I mean, I hate to state the obvious, but nobody in heaven disagrees about truth. Right? Nobody in heaven disagrees about what's there. They see it. After death, everybody sees immediately, this is God, this is his son, Jesus Christ, this is the Blessed Virgin Mary, these are the truths of God. This is reality. Nobody disagrees about that in heaven. For that matter, nobody disagrees in hell either. That is what the Catholic Church is saying. In order to get into heaven, you must accept the truth. And the truth is preached by the Catholic Church. Every other religion is wrong to some degree or another. This is what we must pray for, for those souls who die outside of the truth, outside of the Catholic faith, that they receive the grace to accept the truth. Because that's going to be hard. It's going to be in a hard position facing Christ on judgment and realizing I lived my whole life outside the church, outside the truth, wanting to be saved, but rejecting all the means God gave me to save my soul. Not going to be easy. So we pray for those graces to be given to those perishing outside the church, to receive those graces and to accept those graces. God desires the salvation of all men, but he has made it contingent upon the sacraments of the church and the, prayer, the prayers of the church and the prayers of the faithful. What did Our Lady tell the shepherd children of Fatima? Why do souls go to hell? Because they're so bad? Right? Because uh, uh, um, they rejected? Because they have no one to pray for them. They have no one to pray for them. The surest way to, to, to ensure that more souls go to hell is telling people it doesn't exist. Everybody goes to heaven. Don't worry about it. It's unreasonable to think God is simply going to grant all these graces necessary when nobody's praying for them and nobody even thinks they're necessary. So on this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us pray for the conversion of sinners. Accept and receive these graces before the moment of death, any time before death, implicitly or explicitly. Let us believe in the power of our prayers and penances and sacrifices and continue asking God for all humanity to realize the necessity to belong to the one true church founded by Jesus Christ, outside of which there is no salvation. God bless you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.